Do you know why you're here? Yes. What was your job? To investigate buildings within the simulation. Was that all? In the beginning. So let's start from the beginning. You, Mr. Hughes? I'm Editor Burke. I'm here to do some research. You need an organization? Perhaps. Come in. What can you tell me about these? This is in a style called Brutalist back on Earth. What time period was that? Post-Second World War, the 1940s to the 1980s specifically. How did this whole style begin? It was after the Second World War and all of Europe was in ruins. The proud infrastructure that had stood for generations was gone. In 1947, Le Corbusier was commissioned to design a building for France's working class families. The building called Unité de Habitation housed 1,600 people and provided them with shops and parks and restaurants and a nursery. Ironically, although brutalism is associated with secular socialism, Le Corbusier's inspiration was a visit to an old Italian monastery. But why are they made of concrete? Architect Bertrand Goldberg said he used concrete because concrete is flexible and steel is not. Additionally, in the context of World War II, they needed inexpensive material that could be erected quickly. Because even the simplest formwork is laborious, cast-in-place concrete is largely devoid of detail. This results in vast, unadorned concrete surfaces. Now, not all brutalist work is concrete. Walter Netsch's Regenstein Library is clad in limestone yet it appears to be concrete from a distance. There were a lot of buildings made out of concrete back then, right? But most of those architects chose to cover the outside of the building with something. But brutalist architects didn't. Why did they expose that concrete? Designers chose to keep the concrete exposed so that it was presented in its most honest form. Architects make a distinction between ethic and aesthetic and brutalists felt that ethic was more important than aesthetic. Social aims trumped historical and cultural motifs. From a brutalist perspective, ornament is unnecessary. Were any other architectural movements paralleling brutalism? International style paralleled brutalism. Many architects were inspired by Mies van der Rohe, Walter Gropius, uh, Corbusier's earlier work, and other modernists. While international style buildings were commissioned by large international companies and private residences, brutalist buildings functioned as educational institutions, civic halls, and social residential towers. From the little bit I know about the post-World War II period, it seems that there was a rapid increase in technology. Did that increase in technology have any role in uh, the development of brutalism? Certainly. Some architects were inspired by increasing industrialization or by technological inventions. Also, American brutalists, having grown up during the Great Depression, focused on frugal methods of construction. As you probably guessed, I was sent into the simulation to evaluate them, seeing if they should be deleted or not. I figured they would send someone sooner or later. It didn't last long on Earth. What do you mean? Well, brutalism began to die in the 1980s. Buildings were stained with rust, 
moss and dirt, and vandals utilized the large concrete surfaces as canvases for their graffiti. Furthermore, the styles became associated with socialist Eastern Bloc countries. That was unpopular with capitalist countries that were increasing in wealth dramatically. Many thought the buildings were too imposing and austere. Do you think they'll be deleted? I don't know yet. That's what I'm here to find out. Thank you for your time. Of course. I'm very informative. Editor Burke, mm -hmm. if you visit any of these buildings, be sure to visit this one. It's the laundry building. It's at the edge of the boundary, and it'll be worth your while. I'll be sure to visit all of them. Is interviewing a historian standard practice? Yeah, it is for me. After you spoke with him, did you feel any different? Uh, no. At the time, it was all just information. I see. Did you visit the building he suggested? I visited all of them, and I gathered information from experts in the simulation. And what did they say? Brutalism, as it was seen, was supposed to be a function, a uh, purely function. Um, there's very much a lack of scale and proportion to them. There's no human scale to them. It's like the size of a football field uh, becomes monotonous almost to uh, reaching nihilistic suicidal tendencies in this building. It's very repetitive, and it's, at least it seems like in the state that it's in now, it's not the most pleasant thing to repeat so much. It seems like there's, there's only opportunity for light at the ends, and that creates a very dark experience on the interior of the building. The advantage, I guess, of a brutalist building is also its disadvantage. It can't be easily adapted and changed to anything, to a new use. Like all of them, they don't have a top, they don't have a bottom, they don't have a middle. Again, there's, there's, with all of these, there's kind of a lack of scale and proportion. There's no fenestration. There's nothing that makes me want to be in that building. For all their concern with um, the energy crisis, they are not insulated well. They're not, uh, the construction techniques are just not at the point where, um, air infiltration was thought about, so you have a lot of leaky buildings. Um, so they're just not very efficient. The library steps back almost a half block away from the street and creates, uh, while it, it contributes to the monumentality of the building, it makes it a very poor urban building because of the way it creates a, a no man's land. The facade is just bereft of anything there's no ornament, there's nothing your eye clings to. It's just this relentless kind of march into the sky of the same thing over and over and over. It still just feels like super corporate and impersonal to me. It feels like a cold, humanless monotony. It's all the same material. There's a lot of repeated pattern, and it's done at a scale that does not feel human. I think that they, they missed a point in that there, there's, no, there's no stopping. I mean, you could build this thing up as high as you want. 
in terms of architecture. There's no stopping it. The functions are slaying out there. The garage lays out there. You, that's all you see for the first several floors of the building along what is now turned into this beautiful river. You look up and you just see cars sitting up there. You've got uh, 15 or 20 floors of parking and it's not a very efficient arrangement for that. I also know in each of the individual plans, I know people who live here and furniture because of the wedge shape is a bit of a problem a lot of times too, they look like they've been just plopped down in the middle of, of a space or an area. Certain buildings um, I think can age really well and they're always loved and certain buildings don't age very well. It's a utopian approach an ideal that we can be self-contained and ignore the outside and we don't have to engage with our communities or our neighbors. Because the windows are right up against the facade on such a tall building um, and they're kind of odd shapes, it reads as um, just not as familiar of a, a building to us. Curves are already like, they have one order which is like the center to begin with. So it's like a tough thing to, they're a tough thing to work with to get harmony out of. Um, and I think this is just, it's got too much going on. The form of it seems like a, um, a flight of fancy that didn't really respond to a design brief. It was just shape making in plan. We are often cause to think about these buildings as if they should be candidates in a museum as a representative of particular styles and it, it's controversial I think partly because um, many of these buildings that we're trying to save for their historic value uh, to have, have little value for us culturally because they uh, were buildings that essentially failed. So after you came back what did you do? I reported my findings to my commander. And she told you to destroy the building drives? Yeah, she said it was clear from my research that they were of no benefit to the simulation. Do you disagree? Yeah, I felt that the investigation wasn't complete at that point. So where did you go? I have more questions. It's the middle of the night. Why the simulation? What brings you here? Well, I didn't really expect to be back, but uh, after visiting the buildings, you felt something. Yeah, I felt uh, insignificant small. What you experienced was the sublime. What is that? The sublime describes qualities impressed upon a person like deep awe and deep emotion. Sublime is different from beautiful. It evokes an emotional response, what you felt. The writer of the philosophical inquiry into the origin of our ideas of the sublime and beautiful argues while sublime and beautiful are eternally distinguished, they can live in harmony with 
one another as qualities of an object. Brutalist buildings are described as sublime. The sublime experience is induced by extremes. Austerity or decadence, structural stability or structural precariousness, massiveness or smallness. Though the body of brutalist work is diverse, the sublime in the brutalist context is often induced by the former of these three sets of extremes. I've reported my findings as fairly as possible to my superiors, but they've insisted that the buildings be deleted. So uh, they told me to delete the building drives. But I'm curious, in your personal opinion, off the record, do you think that these buildings should be preserved? Yes. Brutalist architects were the first to attempt housing schemes that were high density and mixed use, as well as affordable for a range of different incomes. Bertrand Goldberg considered urban planning, architecture, and industrial design throughout his career. Furthermore, these buildings were constructed with both hand craftsmanship and industrialized manufacturing processes. In this way, brutalism continued Frank Lloyd Wright's belief that the machine can work in conjunction with handmade art. Brutalist buildings bring a comforting sense of permanence to those who see them. They may rust and crack, but those flaws highlight all the more the history of the building. As hulking, aging masses in the midst of a frenetic city, they remind us of our smallness and our mortality. I admit they're uncomfortable, but they're necessary in the simulation. I, uh, I won't be needing these anymore. I thought maybe you'd appreciate them. I need to be going, but uh, thank you so much for your time. You do realize that because of your decisions, you'll be stripped of your rank. You will no longer identify yourself as an editor and will not be allowed to leave the simulation. Any unfinished duties will be completed by a competent editor. Enjoy your life in the simulation, Mr. Burke. I hear it's nice this time of year.